It's well established by now that the RTX 4090 is a blazing fast graphics card, yielding high frame rates even at a demanding resolution such as 4K. As this GPU supports PCIe 4.0, the concern I had was what would happen if someone decided to use this GPU installed on a motherboard that only supports PCIe 3.0? Would there be a loss of performance? And if so, how much? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at some benchmarks to verify something that's been on my mind for a while now. Last month I reviewed the RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio and was quite impressed by its gaming performance. Having the capability to deliver triple digit performance across a wide variety of games at 4K is absolutely fantastic. Granted, you do also have to have the adequate system to really get the most out of this graphics card. Currently, I'm in the midst of upgrading my test bench so that I can bring you guys more GPU testing results confidently without any sort of doubt such as, am I holding back performance? But that's a topic for a future video. However, the reason why I brought that up is because I wanted to conduct some benchmarks to test out and verify something that's been on my mind for a while now since I got my hands on the RTX 4090 graphics card. Eventually, I plan on migrating this GPU you from my test bench and use it in my OLED rig which is using the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5 motherboard. That system has a 5800X3D and an RTX 3080 in there for now and it's been doing a decent job but for my 4K OLED which has a 120Hz display, a graphics card like the 4090 seems like the perfect pairing. The concern is that the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5 motherboard only supports PCIe 3.0. It hasn't caused me any issues with my 3080, which also supports PCIe 4.0, but as you all know, the 4090 is miles ahead of the 3080. It's going to be greatly saturating the PCIe slot due to demanding more bandwidth. So what I wanted to know was what would happen if I was to run a 4090 on a motherboard with PCIe 3.0, would there be performance loss, and if so, how much would we even lose? Would it get to the point where I may need to even swap the board for one that supports PCIe 4.0? So these were all the questions that were on my mind, and it's what prompted me to run these benchmarks. And I thought I might as well make a video out of it and share the info with anyone who, out there who might be wondering the same thing or have the same sort of concerns. Before we jump into the benchmarks, I wanted to go over the test system specs. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X which I've overclocked using PBO2 and Curve Optimizer. It's cooled by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. For the RAM, we've got 32GB of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 memory, running at 3800 mega transfers per second, CL14, and the timings have been manually tuned. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. For our storage, we have a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. Powering the entire system is an EVGA G3 1000W 80 Plus Gold Certified Power Supply. The operating system installed is Windows 10 Pro. As for testing, I tested the 4090 in PCIe 4.0 mode and then in PCIe 3.0 mode which was configured through the BIOS. I also did two more tests using resizable bar for each configuration. Many people don't actually know this even if you have an older board with PCIe 3.0, there's a good chance it might have gotten a BIOS update that supports resizable bar. The X370 Gaming 5 from Gigabyte did get a BIOS update which allowed my 3080 to have P uh, resizable bar enabled. A lot of people think that resizable bar is just a PCIe 4.0 feature, but it's actually built into the spec of PCIe 3.0, which is why some boards have access to it. Therefore, I thought it would be interesting to see what kind of performance impacts there would be with it enabled. All the titles I tested were done at 4K, which in my opinion is the most viable resolution for the 4090. Alright, so for our first title, we've got Total War Warhammer 3, and here we can see that using PCIe 3.0, there is a bit of performance loss, but we're looking at a mere 3 FPS loss for the average frame rate, and it looks like resizable bar does nothing for either config. So far, we're off to a good start. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, and this game recently got an update where it added a few more graphics options you can tune. I just opted for the extreme setting, and they also enabled ray tracing for the player's card during gameplay. Ray tracing was always included in this title, but it was only available for the player's car during photo mode when you wanted to take cool pics of your car. But now they have recently made an update where the player can enable ray tracing for their vehicle during gameplay. Obviously with these updates there would be a bit of performance impact but as you guys can see performance is still stellar with the 4090 and it's providing triple digit performance. Also for our main topic changing to PCIe 3.0 results in no performance loss which is great. 
Next up, we have Hitman 3, and with PCIe 3.0, the 4090 does lose about 5% of its performance from PCIe 4.0. Despite that, we're still averaging around 144 FPS, which is more than enough for a title like this. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see all configurations are showing the exact same performance, which I want to reiterate is a good thing. PCIe 3.0 is still providing ample bandwidth for this GPU. In Red Dead Redemption 2, we can see there's a very small performance advantage that PCIe 4.0 holds over 3.0, but it's just 2 to 3 FPS, which can even be considered margin of error, but more importantly, it's negligible. It's a difference the user will not notice at all. Although PCIe 4.0 with rebar enabled provides a little bit of an uplift for the 1% lows. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another title which shows performance is basically within margin of error for the average FPS across all the configurations, however with the configs that have rebar enabled, we're again seeing a slight performance uplift for the 1% lows. Far Cry 6 is up next, and this is a title where performance is basically identical across all configs, so let's move on. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next, and I'm not sure if it was a recent patch or since I'm using more updated drivers, but performance has gone up overall. Before I was averaging about 75 FPS with 1% lows in the low 50s, but now for all configurations the average FPS is north of 80, and our 1% lows have also gone up as well. I did also make sure to check that no upscaling like DLSS or FSR was enabled. Regardless, the good news is that PCIe 3.0 is providing the same level of performance as PCIe 4.0. In Gears 5, I noticed that while average FPS is the same across the board, 1% lows are slightly better on PCIe 3.0, which was odd. And these results were taken from an average of 3 runs, so it's not like it was an odd run. Very interesting to see that happen. In Control, we can see more of the same story where performance from all the configurations is virtually identical. Horizon Zero Dawn is next, and this game shows the best performance is attained when using the 4090 on PCIe 4.0 with rebar enabled. That config was about 6% faster than the PCIe 3.0 config, but that's not to say that the performance of PCIe 3.0 was bad. While we saw a measurable difference, they're not something that the user will even notice. Doom Eternal is a game that's very well optimized, but something interesting I noted was that in this title, it shows performance regression with rebar enabled for both PCIe 3.0 and 4.0, and it's more profound with PCIe 3. Regardless, we're getting north of 300 FPS at 4K with nearly everything maxed out minus ray tracing, so I doubt anyone will really care. Rainbow Six Extraction is a newer title in my benchmark suite that I've added. Using the Vulcan API at 4K, this game gives us some great performance figures, and I'm happy to also show you guys that using PCIe 3.0 with the 4090 barely impacts performance. The last title we have is Halo Infinite, and again, there's really not much to say here, you're basically getting the same level of performance regardless of PCIe 3.0 or 4.0. When we take a look at our 14 game average, to nobody's surprise, the results are exactly as you'd expect them to be. PCIe 3.0 barely has any negative performance impact on the 4090 at 4K. Maybe the performance impacts would have been greater at a lower resolution, I'm not sure, but I did these tests at 4k to reflect a realistic scenario for the 4090 where I would be using this in a rig that is connected to a 4k 120Hz OLED. One of the other reasons why I wanted to test this and share the results with you guys is because I know there are a lot of people out there who have older motherboards like an X370 or B450 motherboard that only supports PCIe 3.0 but the reason why they're still hanging on to it is well similar to what I did they can just drop in a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and prolong that system's life. But there's probably still a lot of people out there who might be running Z390 or even Z490 boards using something like a 9900K and for those who are out there using those kinds of systems on older boards, you can rest easy knowing that you're not going to be holding back the 4090 by using it on PCIe 3.0. So that'll do it for this video, I'm glad to know that my concern about me gimping my 4090 by eventually using it on my PCIe 3.0 board has been addressed. However, I am a bit surprised that even a fast GPU like an RTX 4090 couldn't fully saturate PCIe 3.0, so I guess we'll have to wait for future generation GPUs to see if we'll eventually hit that limit. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.